Okay, we get many thousands of thoughtful, amusing, sometimes abusive comments and questions from you every week. And rest assured, my long-suffering team reads every single one. <laughs> and they've decided it'd be quite fun if each week they pick a few of the ones that most stand out to them. God forbid that I get to see them first. And I'll respond to them. I haven't seen any of these until the moment they pop up in front of me. So, well, here we go. First up, on the subject of our heated debate between Rabbi Shmuley and Professor Norman Finkelstein, I was asked, do you condemn Rabbi Shmuley? I'll tell you what I do condemn. I didn't like how ad hominem he got, how personally abusive. Norman Finkelstein is the foremost Jewish anti-Semite on planet Earth. You said, you have my word that God willing, I will digitally decapitate, digitally disembowel, and digitally destroy him. Your debating style Hello? was to drone on coma-inducing, that's how you debate. You try to put your opponents mm. into slumber, for God's sake. Particularly the way he persistently brought in uh, Norman Fickelstein's parents, who were Holocaust survivors. He actually attacked his own parents, whose only crime was to be Jewish. Their entire family was annihilated in Warsaw. I think the way that he did that was completely unacceptable. And I actually praise Norman Finkelstein for keeping his calm. Would you like me to respond now? On the same subject, Piers, I can't see any reason to host a debate between Professor Finkelstein and Rabbi Shmuley as they're representing different wavelengths. One is knowledgeable and speaks only facts. The other one is literally chaotic and just yells and screams to win the debate. Well, OK, I actually think they're both pretty smart people. They've got very different styles. Norman Finkelstein, very professorial, calm, you know, does his thing his way. Let's take a simple metric. We'll take the question of children killed. Rabbi Shmuley, very high octane, passionate, uh, very theatrical. Just answer the question, I... Norm, for God's sake. But I think they both believe passionately in what they say. They just happen to disagree. And the thing about Uncensored is that we want to have people who don't agree to have proper, passionate debate. That's what used to happen around the world before the Woke Brigade stopped us. <laughs> now, the next one says, on the subject of moving to YouTube, will you now be more courageous and saying things you tend to avoid saying in fear of the backlash and the people who control the media? Here's a little secret. I've never controlled myself. I've never controlled myself when I worked in America, uh, at CNN. I didn't at Good Morning Britain, ITV, on the legacy media, the mainstream media. I didn't do it on... Uncensored when it was on Talk TV. I certainly won't be doing it on Piers Morgan Uncensored on YouTube. I am uncensored. 1,200 people were massacred, weren't I they? I think 1,200 people were killed. Bullshit. And they're terrorists. <laughs> now, with regard to my Prince Harry debate, Pamela says, when will King Charles see sense and strip Harry and Meghan of their titles? That would solve a lot of problems within the family. Well, you know what it would solve? It would solve the problem of having people who want their royal cake and eat it. If Harry and Meghan want to go off and be Harry and Meghan celebrities in California and make as much money as they can from trashing the monarchy and the royal family, that's fine. It's a free world, they can do it. They just can't do it while they have royal titles. That is the epitome of hypocrisy, and it flies in the face of everything the royal family stands for, which is, yes, they get all the trinkets, the palaces, the servants, and so on, but in return, they put in a shift. They do duty, real duty to this country. Those two, their only duty is to themselves and their wallets. And I'm not having it. Please. Uh, yes, you are very cynical. <laughs> On Crystal Hefner's interview, Tristan Tate said, not sure I believe this woman. The man's dead and trashing him can bring relevance and money. He isn't around to defend himself. You should invite some of his close friends to share the panel with her and get multiple sides of the story. Actually, a really interesting point, because I knew Hef uh, Hugh Hefner, and I was thinking that same thing at the time, which is, you didn't say any of this even to his face while he was live. Did you ever confront him about his behaviour? I didn't. Even when you stopped having sex with him, even in the very last stages of his life, why wouldn't you? Um, so I found that a bit confusing and bemusing. You kept the Hefner name. I'm curious, why? I'm changing it. You are? Yeah. And, of course, other of his playmates have been very complimentary about him since he died. So I'm not quite sure where the truth lies in this. Uh, one thing's for sure, 
Hugh Hefner was from the, if there's one thing worse than being talked about, school, it is not being talked about. I think an argument could be made that you took me for a ride, but I must say, quite frankly, it was a pretty nice ride. And I also had another comment about that interview uh, from Farhead the Wise, who said simply, pervert Morgan uh, discussing sex. Hmm. Well, sex is fine, mate. You should try it, Farhead. <sighs> Former mobster Michael Francisi's interview was a big hit. More than 1.5 million of you so far have watched it. Joker One asked, did Piers Morgan really expect Michael to admit to calling out murders and hits on people? He's in the Mafia for a reason. Well, look, if you're in the Mafia, you're not supposed to talk about it, one, which he does. Uh, but secondly, he made it pretty clear that he was responsible for a lot of people dying. Did you kill anybody? As a captain, I was given an order, was told what to do, I did it. He didn't actually say, I personally killed them, but you don't get to be a captain in the Mafia if you don't kill people. So I think we could all draw probably the correct conclusions from that. Uh, one other correspondent asked, did you kill anyone, Piz? I haven't yet, but I do feel murderous sometimes. I really do. <laughs> On my interview with Patrick Bet David, by definition, we're already at World War III. Iran needs to know right off the bat, you don't fear them. You got to protect the border and we're not doing it today. Don't send a penny to Ukraine. You don't live here. I want debate. I want exchange. Let's argue. Piers must have taken his meds on this day. Great interview debate. Thank you. Thank you for noticing that I wasn't as maybe as uh, interrupting as I normally do or as combative. I actually, when I get a really smart, interesting person who is making a lot of sense, I tend to let them talk. I don't think anyone contributed to this discussion worldwide more than you did, positively. I think you were number one. The problem, the problem starts when they're not very bright and I have to intervene and correct the absolute whoppers coming out of their mouth. There were tears that ran down my face, but I did not cry. I mean, that's crying. I would disagree. And finally, on my interview with Mikhail Kuldikovsky, Green Timber says, give Piers a cookie. He didn't interrupt the guests. Well, we call them biscuits over here, Green Timbers, and very nice they are too. Hmm. Delicious. Anyway, that's it for Morgan's Mail, mail by this week. If you want to join in, then like and subscribe to the Piers Morgan Uncensored YouTube channel. It's absolutely flying. We've got nearly two and a half million subscribers now. Join the fun. You can see all the interviews, the debates, the monologues, all the fun, and the mailbag. What more do you want in life?